The National Electoral Jury of Peru recognizes the from of Pedro Castillo in the general elections last June 6 and proclaimed him president elect of Peru after more than a month waiting. In Germany, the clear up has barely begun after extensive flooding in the country and beyond as the human and economic costs are staggering. Syrian air defense shuts down Israeli missile over the northern province of Aleppo. Welcome to Telesur English. I am Denise Herrera and this is from the South. The National Electoral Jury of uh, Peru recognizes that Trump or Pedro Castillo in the general elections last June 6 and proclaimed him president elect of Peru after more than a month of waiting. Because National Election Jury, in compliance with the Constitution and the law, after consolidating the result of the decentralized counting of the voting of the presidential election issue in the single nation electoral district, which includes the votes cast within the territory of the country and abroad contained in the minutes, sent by 60 special electoral juries, proclaims the formula of candidates presented by the political organization, National Political Party Free Peru, is the winner of the election of president and vice president of the Republic in general elections 2020 and consequently as national jury of election in fulfillment of work carried out by the national jury of election of Peru I proclaim president of the Republic to Don Jose Pedro Castillo Terrones and first vice president of the Republic to Doña Ercilia Boluarte Segarra in his first speech, the president-elect of Peru, Pedro Castillo, Castillo, called for the unity of the people, regardless the differences. At this moment, I call you upon the highest unity of the Peruvian people. I call you upon the unity to force that doors of the next bicentennial that we have left celebrating this bicentennial with all its differences, with all its problems, and with all that we have lived. Dear compatriots, I bring here the open heart of each and every one of you in here. There is no... Castillo said that during his term of office, all races and any cities of Peru will be welcome, in addition to fully combating corruption against those who steal money from the people. To all races, to all ethnicities, to all human beings, here will be the government where no one is left behind the open call. The spaces are open. Bring your spirits, but with loyalty, with dignity, with transparency. We will not allow us to steal a penny from the Peruvian people and ratify our commitment to make a fight against corruption. Earlier, the former presidential candidate of the Fuerza Popular Party, Keiko Fukimori, expressed on a press conference that she recognized the final results of the presidential elections. I announced that by fulfilling my commitments with Mario Vargas Llosa with the international community, I will recognize the results because it's what the law said and the constitution I have sworn to defend. In Nicaragua, President Daniel Ortega at the ceremony to commemorate the 42nd anniversary of the triumph of the Sandinista Popular Revolution announced that he had delivered more than 500,000 property titles of the citizens and rural and urban areas of the country. From 2007 to date, This revolution, which belongs to the poor and to the poor, which belongs to the peasants and to the peasants who belong to the workers, has been handed over to this date 501,380 urban and rural property titles. And we continue and we will continue to issue property titles until in our homeland we have all Nicaraguans who have their house, their lot, have their house and have their farm, all with their lands titles registered in their register.
In Haiti, interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph, who has been leading the nation since the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse, announced that he will resign and have over power to the Prime Minister designate Ariel Henry. In a statement to press, Joseph said he will hand over power to the Prime Minister designate, who has the support of a group of Western powers and the United Nations, an official source close to the Prime Minister said a new government will be installed on Tuesday, with Joseph in the post of Foreign Minister. The change comes after a grouping of the most influential ambassadors to the country explicitly endorsed Ariel Henry as a Prime Minister and move beyond normal diplomacy and further evidence of the foreign meddling in the Caribbean nation. In Haiti, the new Prime Minister Ariel Henry called on national union to tackle the various problems facing the Caribbean country. In my capacity as Prime Minister to launch a call for national reconciliation to pull our forces for cooperation among all of us. It's the only way to stop that curse into chaos and put our country on the side of all the threats around it. I would like to reiterate my firm condemnation of the assassination of the President of the Republic, Moise, a crime that has no qualification but hate. On behalf of my family and the entire nation, my condolences to the presidential family in Maureen. He also expressed his opinion on the strength of the Haitian people in the face of the assassination of the young president. I offer my greetings to the Haitian people who have shown themselves to be very strong in the face of this death that we could call a coup d'etat. In the face of this, they have to keep their cool head and calm about what has happened. We are staying very peaceful in the face of this hate crime, a coup d'etat, where all Haitians have helped bring peace to the country to keep us in full unity. Now, I am inviting all the leaders of the country who have a responsibility to talk in the same direction. We have to stay with the same feelings. We will need it to face the many challenges that await us. While attacks on Cuba and the Biden administration and extreme sectors in Florida continue, many Americans have come together to help bring support to the island to tackle COVID-19. Solidarity movements in the U.S. launched a campaign which saw thousands of Americans donate $500,000 to send 6 million syringe to Cuba to advance with the COVID-19 vaccination campaign. In the midst of ongoing shortage of medical supplies due to the U.S. blockade, the first shipment of 2 million syringe left the United States and arrived on the Cuban port of Mariel on Saturday, July 17. The Bolivian government revealed the armament sent by Argentina in support of the 2019 COVID deaths. The Minister of Government, Eduardo del Castillo, disclosed the armament sent from Argentina in November 2019 by the administration and the then President Mauricio Macri, arsenal which was used to repress the Bolivian people. Likewise, the minister pointed out that a large part of it was destroyed to the Bolivian police, another part to the Air Force, and the remaining arsenal is under investigation to know whether it was used. Next, I want to show you on screen the material that was found in the warehouse of the Bolivian police that had for representing the Bolivian people. Here on screen, we will be able to see one of the boxes that has the stamp of the Argentine Gendarmerie, that we have the rubber shells, that we have the ammunition and the corresponding gases, this ammunition. She was irregularly admitted to our country without complying with the established rules for her interment. Well, take a short break now, don't go away. Welcome back.
In Germany, the clear up has barely begun after extensive flooding in the country and beyond as the human and economic costs are staggering. The death toll in the floods in Germany has risen in the last few hours to at least 156 people and the search continues for the hundreds more missing. At ground zero of the floods, where infrastructure is severely damaged, roads and bridges are destroyed and there are still areas without electricity and water. As part of the recovery efforts, the police in Koblenz are making an initial assessment of the floods that the Western Germany, including the town of Erwiller. An overview of the police in figures, a total of 117 people have died so far. 754 people have been injured by the flood so far. Many roads and bridges have been destroyed and are no longer usable. Drinking water, electricity and telecommunications infrastructures have been largely destroyed. It will take a long time to restore these infrastructures. The World Health Organization confirmed the presence of cases of the new Lambda variant of the COVID-19 in more than 30, uh, 30 countries. The first cases of this variant were detected in Peru in December 2020. This variant represents 81% of contagions in Peru. This new variant has spread to several countries in America. The authorities have included the Lambda variant of the list of variants of interest such as Delta, Gamma, Alpha and Delta. The UK government warned on Monday that there will be an increase in COVID-19 deaths covered the coming weeks. It came out uh, England celebrated Freedom Day in which nearly the coronavirus restrictions were left. In, in terms of the question about super spreading events, and I'll have a go and then uh, Jonathan may want to, to add, add to this. When we look at the number of people in hospital with COVID, it's a somewhat different picture. So the first peak, second peak, you can see clearly, and then on the right-hand side, you can see that the number of people in hospital is increasing, so it, can, it will increase because of the infections, but not as far as it did before, and that is because of the protection of the vaccines. So we do expect this number to increase. We do expect there to be over 1,000 people per day being hospitalized with COVID because of the increased infections, but the rate should be lower than it had been previously because of the protective effects of vaccination and the real importance of making sure that everybody gets vaccinated. England lifted most pandemic restrictions Monday despite surging infections and die warnings from the experts. As the Delta variant sweeps parts of the Europe and Asia where new cases are threatening to scupper the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. If we don't open up now, then we face a risk of even tougher conditions in the colder months. When the virus has a natural advantage, we lose that fire break of the school holidays. And there comes a point after so many have been vaccinated, when further restrictions no longer prevent hospitalizations and deaths, but simply delay the inevitable. And so we have to ask ourselves, the question, if not now, when? Likewise, anti-lockdown protesters in Westminster, London raised their voices against the government's ongoing COVID-19 restrictions on Monday, also known as Print of Day. Protesters hailed, signed and chanted freedom as they gathered in Parliament Square on Monday after almost all remaining coronavirus restrictions were lifted in England. Protesters deem its vaccination program to be the anti-democratic medical and technology tyranny. French government spokesman Gabriel Attal on Monday lamented the shameful comparisons of vaccine rules to Nazi atrocities and urged the public to stick to the new virus measures aimed at a spike on COVID-19 cases. Understand people's confusion and exasperation in the face of an epidemic that has spread in our country over the past 
18 months. We made so many efforts to get out of this epidemic and have endured so many restrictions. Over the past years and a half, the French people have been exceptional. Nothing and no one can make us forget this. Today, the game has changed. And with the vaccine, we can keep this virus under control. And we will not give in to the tyranny of dramatic images, outrageous slogans and shameful comparisons. A vast majority of the French has already been vaccinated or has signed up to get a jab. More story coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Syrian air defenses shot down Israel missile over the northern province of Aleppo on Monday. In attack that a war detainer set targeted position of pro-regime groups. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the missiles landed near the Scientific Study Reach Center in Al Safira, destroying bases and a weapons depot used by the pro-Rina groups. Since the outbreak of the Syrian civil war in 2011, Israel has routinely carried out raids in Syria, mostly targeting Iranian and Lebanese Hezbollah forces in well as Syria's government troops. In Iraq, around 30 people lost their lives following the explosion of a handcraft construction device in Sadr city. The Iraq government reported that it was a terrorist attack on the even of the Muslim Fest of Sacrifice. The government noted that the death toll ranges from 28 to 30 deaths, including several minors. The security forces deployed at the site of the attack and indicated that at least 15 injured victims were taken to a hospital. Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei has called for global condemnation of the middle of the United States and its allies in the region. Addressing followers during the annual Islamic pilgrimage of Hajj, the Iranian spiritual leader and politician stressed the region has suffered Western interference of over the century. He noted that they has led to dispute and separation among Muslims, preventing them from enjoying the full spirituality of the holy pilgrimage. In Afghanistan, the head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah said, the Afghan people expected much more from the latest talks in Doha between the Afghan government and Taliban in order that the door for negotiations is open. Well, of both sides. And we, we also came here to, to tell them that uh, we have come with seriousness, but at the same time, uh, we are flexible and it requires flexibility from both sides. So in, in, in the past two days, we also agreed that uh, there should be no pause in the negotiations. Uh, and uh, while the collaboration and support from the international, will, uh, international community will continue in different, many different ways, uh, there wouldn't be the presence of international troops. Certainly it had an impact. Foreign ministers of Russia, Sergei Lavrov and Nicaragua, Denis Mukala, held meetings in Moscow. These talks were described by the Nicaraguan Foreign Minister Denis Moncada as productive and positive. These negotiations promote bilateral cooperation between the two countries in areas such as economics, security, information, food and transportation. It was also reported that both authorities signed a collaboration agreement to guarantee international information security. More than 30 people have died in the Indian city of Mumbai after an intense burst of rainfall caused a landslide and wall collapse. Unchanging monsoon uh, patterns due to climate change lead to more extreme rains across India. According to India's National Disaster Response Force, rescue efforts continue through the night with workers uh, digging through mint and debris to find survivors. The rain also inundated a water purification plant, leaving part of the city without drinking water. Mumbai residents were advised to boil the water from the, from the tank before consuming it. We have come to the end of this new brief. 
You can find this and many other stories in our website, Telesur.net. And join us on social media for Telesur English. I am Denise Herrera. Thank you for watching.